Hey, are you ready for chapter three? So remember, so far we have uh, chosen a new disciple and Peter got up and spoke to everybody about this gift that was given. And now we are going to see exactly what is happening with Peter and as he continues on without Jesus and the gift that has been given to him. So chapter three of the book of Acts. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them, wouldn't you? Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit at the begging, sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were assembled and they were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, you handed him over to be killed, you, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided <clears throat> to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and no was made strong. It is in Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. <clears throat> Repent then and turn to God. Get my book up here. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the, from the Lord. My contacts are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I think they're a little bit dry, but just bear with me. So let me start that verse again. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may, <clears throat> that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from among the people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So here we see 
that Peter and John were in this uh, were going into the temple. They were speaking, and outside of the temple colonnade was this man who was a cripple from birth, and he he was beg he was a beggar, and so he was expecting Peter and John when they stopped and told him to listen and look at him. They ex he expected them to give him some money, but they said. Uh, I don't have anything to give. I, I don't have any monetary thing to give you. But what I do have, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And that he reached out his hand and he brought the man up and he helped him to get up and he started walking. The people were astonished. But see, this is what the power of Jesus does. This is what reading the Bible, when you really read what history, this is history. When you read history and when you read about what the Bible and of what Jesus did, you're going to see amazing things. And he did this through people. He did it through his, his disciples. This was Peter and John. They went, they said, I don't have any money to give you, but I do have this and I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you the power of the name of Jesus. I'm giving you what Jesus wants you to have. So get up, stop begging and start walking. And that's exactly what he did. And he went off rejoicing. He was so happy. Can you imagine not being able to walk? And all of a sudden, you're walking? Now, any, we if we had never been able to walk, we're going to have atrophy. We're going to have all these things that are wrong with us. But God completely healed him because he went off jumping and leaping. And you don't just do that after you've been bedridden for a while. So that was a complete miracle in that he was able to get up and go walk. And this isn't; these are not just stories. These are actual events that happened. So we can take this scripture and we can look at it and say, okay, this happened. This is what Jesus is, uh, did through Peter and, and John. Now, how can I apply that to me and to my life? Well, when you accept Jesus into your life, you have that power within you. You've got the power of the Holy Spirit living within you so that you can pray for people. You can pray for their healing. You can pray for their, uh, for their understanding of things. And a lot of times we might ask, well, why don't we see people that are healed today in the United States more than we do? And I don't have an answer for that. I have thought and wondered that myself over and over and over, but you you hear and you read and you see testimony and, and people talking about people that are in countries, third world countries and places that have nothing and there are true miracles happening there. And the only thing that I can think of is we as a, a culture in the United States have become so accustomed to uh, everything that we need at our fingertips, that we don't have that trust and we don't need to trust in the Lord like people who have nothing do. So that's the only thing that I can really come up and think about is that we don't, we don't have that need, that, that desire, that uh, necessary need. It's not like uh, it's too easy for us to go to the grocery store or go to the pharmacy and get us a painkiller or get us something. It's, it's easier to go do that than to just say a prayer and believe and trust God to heal you. That is our culture. That's what we've become accustomed to. And my challenge to me and to everyone that's listening here is let's stop being accustomed to the easy things of life and try to trust in the Lord and trust in him to believe in him, to do the miracles that took place in the Bible, because that is exactly what God wants us to do. God wants to use us, but we have to trust and we have to realize that he wants to use us and give him the, uh, the go ahead, say, okay, God, you can use me. I'm here. I'm willing. What are you going to do? All right. So that's what we have for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you've got something out of it. And uh, let me know. Tell me what you're thinking about it. If you have questions, let's have a chat. Um, comment below and let's talk about it. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.